Bible, Torah, Book of Covenant. What we have in the Book of Covenant, in English called Bible, is broken down into different segments. The scripture is the Old Covenant or Old Testament. And in that Old Testament or Covenant or scripture, you find out that we have three portions or three parts that make up the scriptures. You have Torah, which is called the law. The first five books it's called the law. The book of the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That is Torah, the law. And when you hear people speak about the law cancelled or destroyed, nailed at the tree or at the cross. Most people do not know what they're talking about. But those who wrote it or who positioned or said that the law is broken, is cancelled. They know what they're talking about. I made a point in our previous message about Acts chapter 15, Council of Jerusalem, how the issue of certain portion of the Torah the law, which is called circumcision there, how it was attacked. And we are told that some Pharisees who went to, into the Gentile lands or cities to preach came and was telling them, except you circumcise, you will not be saved. And also we heard how Paul that told that Paul said that the Gentile it was hard for Gentiles to follow or to believe or to go in you know, that aspect of circumcision. Now it boils down that. Paul and Barnabas were sent to Jerusalem to meet with the elders and the other apostles so that they would decide how they will, you know, um, how they will preach the gospel to the, the Gentiles who were not part of the Israelites community that follow the Torah. And they came out with four areas of instruction ostensibly from Moses as well, which is the law. What Moses had penned down for them. You see, on one hand, it is they are running away from the law. The law of circumcision, for instance. On the other hand, they were going into the law to pick about four aspects of the law that the Gentiles must keep because they were on themselves not good at keeping all those areas of human character. Now, at the end, they reached the verdict that the Gentiles should not be burdened or troubled 
keeping all those, I mean, uh, keeping the circumcision. Now, what happened there? And what was projected into the gospel and the epistles is massive. What happened later is massive. Now, I'm just looking at the corruption that we find in what is called the Book of Covenant, Old Covenant and New Covenant. We find out that a lot of falsification happened in the scriptures, in the New Testament falsification, corruption. Some are outright information which was not or never related to our Yahshua. They were embedded or inserted. In the Book of Covenant, now I will be using the word Bible. In the Bible, you find out that certain information or stories told are not from the Father. You find that there are different writers. Some time ago, I did mention to us that there are what some writers or theologists call um, sources. Why source? Yahwists, group of people who we are referred as the earliest people that wrote the scripture. For instance, from where Moses himself, he heard the word of Yahweh. Yahweh asked him, write down. For instance, the song in Deuteronomy chapter 32, Yahweh commanded him, write these songs down. When he went to Oreb or my Sinai to collect the two tablets of stone, which we call the Ten Commandments, he also collected other information, which along with today we call the Torah. They were all written down. They were written in the books. So the ones that were written in books or book, it was one book, it was a big volume. We are told it was kept, that was kept in the Ark of Covenant by the side, by the left side of the Ark. That's what the Bible said. Then the two tablets that has the Ten Commandment Covenant was, we are kept, those two tablets were kept at the middle of the Ark. Now, by the time we got hold of the Bible, after all that transpired, finally the Bible entered our hands because it was withheld. After Jerusalem, after Judea was conquered, because the tribe of Judah was the last to be conquered, the ten tribes the ten tribes of Israel were conquered by the Assyrians, scattered all over the world. So they lost all whatever they had, whatever that remained with them, they lost it. In fact, they lost following Yahweh. It was their breakup 
the marriage breakup that caused their marriage relationship with Yahweh. That breakup was the reason why he scattered them. So by the time they were leaving Yahweh, the name of Yahweh was lost to God. Name of Yahweh was lost to God. And that was what Yahweh saw and he knew when he was giving them the Ten Commandments that made him to resound and resounded that to their ears. That anybody that messed up with his instructions, his Torah, his commanded ways, and forget him and worship God, that person will die. And he won Israel year after year and years upon years, centuries upon centuries. They didn't adhere to Yahweh's instruction. What did Yahweh do? Yahweh had to send armies of Assyrians that destroyed, destroyed their land almost to exterminate them, then only few, only few were left. Only few were left. Let's look at where Yahweh was resounding. It, it's just like a summary. Yahweh sounded it as a summary of all the warning, all the drawing of their ears that they didn't hear. Deuteronomy chapter 8, I read from verse 19 and or to, up to 20, 19 to 20. Then it shall be if you by any means forget Yahweh your father and follow all that. That is not the right word. I want to discuss that word, order. But the appropriate or right word that is that should be there is and follow God. That order should be expunged. That order should be expunged, should be deleted, should be cancelled. Because order is an associating word. Word that depicts association. That is to say, Yahweh is part and parcel of God. But in that instance, Yahweh is set, kind of set apart. Though he belongs to the hierarchy of God. So Yahweh said that association should not be found amongst you. You should not associate him with God. Why? Gods are created beings. Yahweh has created first day and everything that are found in the first day, second day, everything that are found in the second day, and so on up to the day six. The same way Yahweh created gods. In day six, he created God, mini God. Small God, God lower or a little lower than the angels. That is human being. That he said, let's create them in our own image. In the image of Yahweh, he created them. They are what? Gods. Lower than, a little lower than the angels. That means children of Yahweh. God is a child or son of Yahweh. Yahshua interpreted that. I have said this so many times. John chapter 14, verse, 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 verses 34 and 30, up to 36 to 37, spoke about that. He defended that because when 
they accused him. When the Pharisees and Sadducees accused Yeshua, oh, you make yourself God. You make yourself son of God. What did he say? Yahweh set me apart. Yahweh sent me into the realm of humanity to do what? That I may save them. I may be their savior. If Yahweh called him and set him apart in the midst of men, and men are called gods. That was Yahshua's response. Men are called, if men are called God, why would you accuse me, whom you were even called and set apart, sanctified for these people? If I say I'm God, why would you charge me to be speaking blasphemy? I'm not speaking any, I'm not blasphemous in what I'm saying. I'm a son of Yahweh. They were charging him, he was calling himself son of Yahweh. God. Beloved, Yahweh is the creator of I and you. We are called gods, but little lower gods. Then, the angels are also gods in that same realm. That's what the Bible said. Let's prove it that a little bit. In Psalm chapter 8, now we are going to look at the same Bible. He's going to tell us the same title. He's going to use it in two varied ways. Psalm chapter 5. Uh, sorry, Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8. Let's look at verse 5. I'm reading from New King, New King James Version. Psalm chapter 5. I mean, Psalm chapter 8. What well, am I mentioning? 5. Psalm chapter 8, verse 5. Because it's in verse 5. My head is keep on going to verse 5. Um, verse 5, there I read. Chapter 8, verse 5. For you have made him a little. Who is him here? Referring to man. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. And here, the spirit was pointing to man. Who is man here? Adam. Adam is the man. But in the later state or later stage of this message of creation of man, that man has to be elevated to certain statue. Now that was pointing to who? To Yeshua. But here, generally, we read as read it as man. But in this particular verse, he's going to call man angel. Listen very carefully. He's referring to man as well as angel at the same time. For you have made him, that is man, a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Let's go to Psalm 80, 82, verses 1, and 86, verses 1. Sorry, what is happening? Psalm 82, 1 and 6. Psalm 82, 1 and 6. I read verse 1. Yahweh stands in the congregation of the mighty. That mighty there also refers to angels or gods or judges. Depending on the context, depending on what Yahweh wants to present. He, you know, synonymously, mighty gods, angels, judges. Now, he judges among the gods. Let's look at verse 6. I said, you are gods. Here, Yahweh is referring to human beings that he appointed 
and raised them as judges. Yeshua made that reference in John chapter 10, 34, when they were charging him of speaking blasphemy. Now, 32 verse 6 again, and all of you are children of the most high. Did you hear that? Because there is translated children of the most high, children of Yahweh. So here, God was used expressly in verse 6. Now, in chapter 8, verse 5, angels were used. Referring to man. Referring to man. Either you call him that title, man or angel. Now, that is the state. That is the title. That man remained man. Adam remained Adam. Because he was not really properly elevated to status of angel like Yeshua. Yeshua was only one that was elevated, sanctified. For what? For the job he was to do in order to overcome sin, in order to overcome Satan, in order to overcome the world. Charging him. Why are you answering God? Why are you answering Son of Yahweh? So God is not anything to be worshipped. God, angel, man, judges, wood, stone, anything at all in this earth that is created, even in heaven, angels that anybody will bow to, the person has made that which he or she worship an idol. That which is worship, that object or subject or whatever becomes idol. They will say, do not do anything with idol. Idol worship. Avoid it. Now, if you look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, corruption everywhere. I'm talking on the subject matter, corruption of the Bible, corruption of the Bible. And the fathers of Israel, the ancient fathers, they started it. They started it. Worship of God, they started it. That was what the world knew in the days of I mean, Genesis chapter 10, 11, Nimrod, you remember Nimrod? Who worshipped sun God? Who worshipped Baal, the Lord, the sun God? Now, human beings never let go. After they were scattered all over the world, they took that initiative, that, that orientation they had from uh, the people of uh the people in the days of Nimrod, who went away, who rebelled against Yahweh, who violated the instruction of Yahweh. They carried whatever they learned all over the world when they were scattered. And that had remained with me today. That is the problem. That is why it is difficult for human beings to understand the Bible. Remember we read in Psalm 25, verse 14, about those who fear Yahweh, who hear the word of Yahweh, who obey the word of Yahweh, who love the word of Yahweh, who does what the Bible calls fear of Yahweh. Those are the people that Yahweh teach the secret of his covenant. So how is somebody, how we, the, the very, the very, when we lost, relationship with him when we lost touch with him when we cannot associate with him, when we cannot call, call on him pray in his name in short when he has ceased to become our leader our guide our father how will he teach us where is the law where we cannot hear his voice again when we when, when we cannot hear what he speak i mean or do what he says 
or tell us to do. Somewhere, Yahshua was charging those who were misbehaving, they think that we are following him. He said, how do you call me a master, master? But you do not do what I say. And the same thing they did, that, that is in Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 46. The same thing they did in um, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and 20, up to 23. They came and they were saying, oh, master, master, we, 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 we did the miracle in your name. We, we healed the sick in your name. We did wonders in your name and all that and all that in your name. I sure said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know you. You walk away. You walk us of iniquity. It, I, those people lost the kingdom. They lost their place. They lost their, because they break Yahweh's. One, the name of Yahweh was missing. The name of Yahshua was missing. They were using another name. God, Lord. You say, anybody that does that, we perish. That's what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And so many Bible portions say so those who forget Yahweh shall perish. And in this Deuteronomy chapter 8, then it shall be if you by any means forget Yahweh your father and follow gods, not other gods. Follow gods, don't associate, don't ever associate the name of Yahweh with gods. He is the creator. He is not creature and is not part of the creature. He is the creator of gods. So let me say, when we forget him and follow gods and serve them and worship them, he said, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. Verse 20. And the nations which, not only individual persons, not only Israelites, any nation that is doing this, after hearing the good news, after hearing or after possessing the Bible, the word of Yahweh, and they do something different, they are going to pay the price. It says, as the nations which Yahweh destroys before you, so you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of Yahweh your father. Now, this is why the world we live is decaying. In fact, it has already decayed. This is the reason everything is going haywire everywhere. The name of Yahweh has been engaged to God, to the Lord. Yahweh says he will sit back. He will withdraw himself. He will remove his face from them. He will hide his face from them and watch them and see what will befall them. When Yahshua came, he's, do you know that the issue or the area of Yeshua's message that has to do with the name of Yahweh and his own name, that they sponge them from the scriptures. We don't see them. We don't read them. But somewhere, somewhere along the line, by the mercy of Yahweh and the spirit of Yahweh leading us, Yeshua said, and Yahweh himself, that Yeshua came, doing what? Declaring the name of Yahweh, declaring the name of Yahweh. So the name which they removed, Yahshua preached it. Yahshua showed it. Yahshua taught it. He said it many places in the scriptures. David also mentioned about how the name of Yahweh was declared. Where is the name of Yahweh that was declared? Yahshua said, of all you have given me, the servants, the, the, the disciples, the apostles you gave to me, none of them was found wanting except the son of perdition. But all these, wanting those who were obedient, said he declared the name of Yahweh to them. So, 
in the Torah, in the scriptures, in the Bible we have today. The name of Yahweh is missing. Where they see Yahweh or Yah for short. Either you call him Yahweh or Yah for short. Yah is salvation. Now that is the name that was imputed on the son. So he bear his name. Yah. Shua. Yahweh. Yah is Yahweh. Yah means Yahweh. Shua means salvation. That is how it is, yes. Yahweh or Yah is imputed on the son. Shua, salvation. So Yahshua is the salvation or Yahweh salvation unto his people. It is Yahshua coming in by virtue of him, setting him apart, bringing him in, sanctifying him for the purpose of human redemption. He was elevated above the angels. Above the angels. Let's listen to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. Because it was also emphasized. It was also emphasized. Let's see Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. Well, let me read it from verse 5. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son? Now, this is Yeshua highly elevated, first class, you know, in nations that adopt this chieftaincy something. There are some chiefs that are above others, first, they call them first class chiefs. So this is first class angel in terms of the realm of the of God elevation. Yahweh elevated him. This is human. God elevated to that realm of the angel because the issue when David was writing in Psalm 8, man, no man was elevated at that time. So there was where they were created a little lower than the angels. But here, man, Yahshua, man, Adam, man, the last Adam that is now elevated has taken the position even above other angels, all the angels, he's above them. Yahshua is man, he's divine, quite all right, but he is, he is man because he took the form of flesh, had blood in him, and it was that blood that was shed that saved man, or that is the, 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 the power that saves man, or that will save this human, humanity in this later days. So when now Yahweh uh, elevated him, he was left, uh, moved above the status of angels above them. And that's why the angels had to worship him. All angels, including Satan, has to worship Yeshua. Now let's read on. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father. See, referring to Yeshua, elevated. And he shall be to me a son. You can see that in John chapter 10, Verse 34, that 5 to 37, Yahshua knew what he was responding. He knew he's been elevated, promoted, and he has the right to answer them that he is son of Yahweh. He is God, son, elevated, highly elevated. Verse 6, but when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of yeah or Yahweh worship him. Here instruction was given to all human beings, angels inclusive, to do what? To worship Yahshua. That all the angels of Yahweh worship 
Yahshua. So that is Yahshua. Then who are the angels? Even the angels that are with Yahweh, who are they? What are they doing? Look at what they are doing. Verse 7 there. And of the angels, he says, other angels, they will minister to Yahshua. Even including the human beings, because human beings are also going to be elevated. They are not going to be in the flesh. They are not going to be lower as they have been lower than the angels before. Even now, listen to what Yahweh says concerning these angels. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits, angels are spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. So what are they in the hands of Yahweh up to today? They are, they are ministering angels. They minister to you, they minister to me by the grace of Yahweh. We are not qualified. We are not, we are nothing to merit the angels working for us. David did say that he will send his ministering angels around us, encamp his angels around us. Said so, Yahweh encamp his angels, ministering angels around us, who, those who fear him, only those who fear him. So the duty of angels is to do the work of servants, to do the work of, you know, messengers, to do the work of, you know, these spirits that go out, minister to the creatures, human beings, Yahweh created in his image until he elevates them, elevates them. So Yahshua, of all human beings, Yahshua is the only one that has been moved, elevated from that God state that, you know, little angel that they are, that God state to the realm above all, all, all angels, only him. Is qualified. The point that, that is being made here is God can never be worshipped except Yahshua. Worship Yahweh because Yahshua came asking us, preaching to us, declaring the name of Yahweh, who we must worship. Yahweh, we must, Yahshua preached to us, worship Yahweh. He was, his assignment was to direct every soul, every human being to Yahweh. To return to Yahweh. That was his. But along the line, Yahweh promoted him. Son, you can be worshipped. No problems. So as we honor him, we shall honor the Father. Do not forget to honor the Father. John chapter 5, verse 23. Honor the Father. Honor Yahshua. So even the angels also do honor Yahshua. They, they do worship him as well. Now, we are talking about the corruption of the Bible. Corruption of the Bible. Falsification. Introducing lies that has caused many to fail, to fall. Has caused many to follow another. That other or another, which they, 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 everywhere in the Bible you see it. That is what they did, so that at the end of the day, people follow that another. And never. Yahweh yeah, said, do not. Never. One, the name of Yahweh was corrupted. The name of Yahshua was corrupted. Yahweh sounded that in Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20 verse 1 and 2. He introduced his name as Yahweh. I am Yahweh that brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of bondage. Do not. Thou shalt not worship. Thou shalt not serve. Thou shalt not bow down. Thou shalt not revere any image, object, picture, whatever that are made by mankind. Because Satan brainwash human mind or human brain and make turn them to be something else so that they worship him and satan uses images that's what the way is saying here satan uses images objects pictures to create the idol the kind of idol turns woods in the bush may we go and cut it cut some parts put them in the fire, warm their food, warm themselves, and the rest, 
they use after cooking. <laughs> the, the balance they use, they call carpenter craftsman to put eyes, put nose, put mouth. Yet all those things will not talk, they will not see, they will not hear, they will not walk. And men nod their head, bow their head, knock their head. All in the name of worshiping all those. They are idols. Do anything idol, whether they are wood or stone or human being or water or sea or ocean or, or rivers or animals, or, they are all idols. Do not bow to any idol. Anything that has been made, configured in, in, in a way to, to be worshipped. That was said, don't do that. It's idol. So the name of Yahweh was removed. The name of Yahshua was removed in order to for that to be achieved by the one called God. So when now Satan saw the vulnerability, the weakness of mankind, he took that position, that title. Look at Second Corinthians. He took that title. You see, Bible pointed all these things out. I don't know why we can't take them on board. I don't know why we are not. Is it that we are not believing Yahweh in what he's saying? Look at what he called this. Who? Because at the end of the day, what Satan he took that title and um, positioned himself as even the God. And seal the mind and eyes and understanding of human being about Yahweh. And that's why he took time to remove every the name of Yahweh from Genesis to Revelation. Remove them completely. And positioned or right God or the Lord as a replacement. And that is what people are reading, clapping. They don't believe when you when you talk about God, they think he is the creator. So this God or the Lord in the eyes of human being becomes the creator. I read verse 3 there, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Verse 4. Whose minds the God, this God, whether it is small letter or capital, God remains God. God is God. God that you are asked never to worship, never bow down to anything called God, whether it is in small letter or all capitalized. Do not. Because that is the one that usurped the power of Yahweh or the name of Yahweh or the title of Yahweh and ascribe it to himself. And to humanity, he told them, God, Lord, is the all you need. No other. And he said, no, 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 no. Beside me, there is no, not even God. That's what Yahweh said. Last week, we read Isaiah chapter 40, where Yahweh was describing even about this word. So this word is insignificant. It's just like a drop of water in a bucket. It's just like a grain of dust. So if the word is seen in the eyes of Yahweh as grain of then where is human being? Because there are other things created, mountains, seas, oceans, uh, the things that are in them, then the vegetations, animals, and so on and so forth. Then human beings that are in, human, human beings will, will not even be seen with microscope, if care is not taken, in the eyes of Yahweh. But then, Yahweh's new way they are, his, he, they are his own, they are special, first fruit, peculiar people. And any, anybody that does his will, he works wonder, wonders in him. So we see who took this title to himself and veiled the eyes and the minds of people, not to look beyond what is called God or the Lord. 
so that everybody will wash on this particular God. So whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine on them. So why is it that people do not have knowledge of the gospel? They don't have knowledge of Torah or the scriptures. They don't have the knowledge of the gospel or epistles written by the disciples because they have removed Yahweh from themselves and embraced God, the fallen angel. Angel that is fallen, that stops obeying Yahweh, that says he cannot obey Yahweh any longer. And he commanded men to bow to him, to worship him. And he told men, look, remove your eyes from Yahweh. Do not call Yahweh again. He, the God or the Lord, is where they will stop. That is who they will call. And thus, what happened? The scripture said, Satan doing this, he did what? He deceived the whole world to believe a lie, to believe the falsehood he laid down. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil old, because from Adam, remember what he did to Adam. He drew Adam into God worship, into worshiping him, the, the, the Satan. Called, he called himself God. Say, come, you will be like gods. You will take the form of. That was what terrible deception. Who deceived the whole world? He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So Satan, oh, devil, so demon, so all the evil spirits out there, they constitute themselves as gods, plural, gods before mankind. And they use varying objects, images, pictures to capture the minds of people, to arrest people, to do their miracles and wonders. But power to do those that are removed from them. And people fall for all these entities. And at the end, they never ever think that there is Yahweh there. So their limitation of the Most High is on God and the Lord, which Yahweh forbid, which Yahweh says never. Don't try it. If you do that, you'll be in trouble. Psalm 97 verse 7. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols, worship Yahweh, all ye mighty ones, all ye gods. Gods. Satan inclusive. All angels, human beings, judges, Whoever, but those who says they will not worship Yahweh is Satan and his agents because they have fallen, they have rebelled. They say, No, they will not worship Yahweh. So Yahweh is commanding everybody to worship him. So Satan said, No, 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 no. That he, Satan, the God of this world, is who they will worship. For thou, Yahweh, at high above all the earth, thou art exalted far above all mighty ones, all gods, all angels. You are above them. Psalm 97, verse 9. On and on and on and on. Exodus 18, verse 11. Yahweh is greater than all the gods. Yes. Yahweh is greater than all the gods. All the gods. Psalm 86, verse 8. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Yahweh. He is their creator. He is their maker. They bow to him, they worship him. And when you see angels worship Yahweh, you marvel. Human beings don't even know how to worship Yahweh. 
So this is what human beings are doing. Instead of worshiping Yahweh, they worship these angels, the fallen angels, because the righteous true angels that are in the presence of Yahweh that worship Yahweh can never tolerate. They will never allow man to worship them. When John the Beloved was being shown everything he need, needed to see and what he needed to note to pass on to the children of Yahweh, to the children of uh, 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 Israelites and all the believers. As we read in the book of uh, um, Revelation, what happened? At a point, he marveled. John marveled, and he wanted to worship the angel. The angel, don't don't try it. I'm a servant. I'm a servant, just like you. Don't try it. But if he's saying uh, the fallen angel spirits, demons that work with Satan, oh, they will demand. They will immediately. Satan don't care whether human beings even embrace other men to worship them. Satan allow his, you know, whatever, uh, those his messengers, his uh, small ones, those that are lower than him, to take glory, to take worship. And that's what he told Adam. I mean, you, you, you are God, you are God. I mean, don't worry, don't listen to Yahweh again. Rulers, in those days, Pope, popes were worshipped. All the, 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 the religious leaders of, of olden days, the judges of olden days, the kings of olden days, they made people to worship them. In fact, some in some countries, their kings are still being worshipped. In some countries, their kings elected, people worship them. It's still happening. Human beings. I always say don't do that. Because they constitute idol. Don't try it. So that is the deception everywhere. Who caused it? Satan is still carrying it out all over the world. Exodus 15, verse 11. Who is like you, O Yahweh, among the gods? No, no one. Deuteronomy 3:24. Is there any God in heaven or on earth who can perform such great and mighty deeds as you do? Anyone? No. Yahweh is highest. Yahweh is the greatest. So 95 verse 3. For Yahweh is great Yah and a great king above all gods. On and on and on and on. Now Isaiah 44 verse 6. Besides me, that is Yahweh, there is no God. In the eyes of Yahweh, all those idols, there are nothing. Any one, anybody, anything that made himself idol to worship, they are nothing in the eyes of Yahweh. Because they are considered gone. Because they are rebellious. Isaiah 44, verse 8. Is there a God besides me? Me, Yahweh. Is there a God besides me? Do you have God out there? Do you have anything that you bow? You say it's God. Yahweh is saying He and Him alone is who to worship. No other. Besides Him, there is none. First Samuel chapter two, verse two. No one is to be called Yahweh or is like Yahweh. No one. No one is like Yahweh. He said, there is none beside you, O oh, Yahweh. Nor is there any rock like our Yahweh. None. None is a match. None, is, none can be compared. None can be equated as our Yahweh. And this calls for understanding. Do not and will not. And Yahweh said, anyone or even a nation that will forget him, that one or the nation will perish. Brethren, let's abide, let's listen, 
Let's be focused. Let's know he that called us. Finally, the scripture, the Bible we have in our hand is so corrupted that we must be very careful. What we read, what people teach us, because what people teach us, most of them are traditions of men, commandments of men, doctrine of elders, and, and so on. Some of them are embedded in the Bible we read. The Bible is full of pagan, pagan, you know, pagan doctrine, pagan idol, like festivals and so on and so forth. We must be very, very careful. Well, it's Yahweh's feast today. Passover and the living bread, they squared it to Passover, Easter, Easter, as pagan spring festival. Pentecost, it's nowhere they celebrate it on their own, on their own way. Trumpets, atonement, tabernacle, these are called autumn feasts. Where is it today? That has been turned to Christmas. Somebody wrote me recently, I said, oh, they are celebrating their uh, harvest in this August, September, you know. And when I looked at it, that is tabernacle. That is what they turned the tabernacle to. Whatever for harvest they call it, that's what they are celebrating. And in whose name? In the name of God, in the name of the Lord. So Yahweh's Feast of Trumpet, Atonement, Tabernacle has been deleted and replaced with whatever they are celebrating. At the end of the day, at the end of the, the year, they, they stage Christmas. All these are pagan idol, you know, images created here and there, packaged here and there, named after whatever, and they worship it. They bow and celebrate on those days. So Torah or law is not cancelled. The word of Yahweh is not cancelled. The book of covenant is not cancelled. And the Bible said, when Yahshua returns, when he comes back, when Yahweh will rule this earth via Yahshua, he will use the law to judge everybody. And the nations will leave their land and go to Jerusalem to learn the Torah, to learn the Book of Covenant, the law, which they are not, or which they are rejecting today. Isaiah chapter 2, I read from 2, 3, verses 2 and 3. Isaiah chapter 2. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days, to which we are, in the latter days, that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be, that is the country, the nation of Yahweh, which is Israelized here in this sense, shall be established on top of the mountains, that is, top of other nations, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Verse 3, many people shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of Yahweh of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Do you hear that? It's massive. This statement, this instruction is everywhere in the scriptures. You go to Zechariah, it is there. Zechariah, I think Zechariah 14. About 16, 17, 18, you read similar thing. Where the feast that they are not obeying today, they are not conducting today, the feast of Tabernacle, they will go to Jerusalem to, to honor Yahweh. So it's better we follow the right path. It's better we queue in and follow He that created us, He that called us. And abide in His word. Because when we abide in His word, follow the covenant of Yahweh. Yeah, and then his spirit will become our teacher. His spirit will help us to underpin truths that are therein. And that way we follow his, what is called his path, his way. What we are following is his way. And you are sure his way is encapsulated in the world, the world, the world that was made flesh. The world, Yahshua is the way, the truth, and the life. That is the way we are following. 
the word is the way, which is in Yeshua. So if we keep obeying him, following him, we fear him, we love him, I tell you, the spirit will be available to give us knowledge, to give us understanding, to educate us, to equip us. The wisdom of Yahweh will be in, in us to guide us into all truth. In the end, we'll be overcomer. In the end, we'll make it. May this be your portion. May this be my portion. May obedience be our portion. That when the trumpet will sound, all of us together will be part of this kingdom that is preparing for the saints, is preparing. That she has came labored and is still laboring to ensure that when he returns, all those that has prepared themselves, all those that have given themselves to the work of Yahweh, that have not left the truth, but sought the truth and followed the truth, followed his instruction, because the, the instruction is only what will help us, guide us into eternity. May we not miss the way. May we not miss the mark. May we find favor. May our obedience continue to galvanize the favor of Yahweh unto us. And when the trumpet will sound, I pray that none of us will be found wanting in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah.